<laughs> and that's how we get these covers off. So that's the same as with the Xbox One controller. Just gotta pry these covers off. And then we can get to these two screws and these two screws. And right away, something I really like on the new controllers is this textured grip. It's kind of difficult to get it on camera, but this is very textured compared to the grip on the Xbox One controller. And these four screws take a security Torx T9. After those four screws are taken off, we've got one screw right down in the middle here. Now with those screws out, we can flip it over and remove the top plate. And with the top plate removed, we can see all of the buttons. We got the rumble motors right here. Let's compare this to the Xbox One controller. So here we have the Xbox One controller and the Xbox Series controller. And immediately, really the only thing that I see that's different is the addition of this button right here. You can see the Xbox One controller does not have that button. Other than that, these look pretty close to exactly the same. Obviously the D-pad is different on the series controller. We also have on the Xbox One controller, just have this little plate that comes up over the X button that is not there on the series controller. Now, if we flip this over, we can remove this bottom plate. And then we get a look at the internal motherboards. We've still got the wires to the rumble motors over here on each of the motherboards. On the series controller motherboard, we've got the USB-C charge port, which is different than on the Xbox One controller. And then we also have these antennas that go down to the Xbox series controller, which we don't have on the Xbox One controller. Now let's get the motherboards out of the series controller and compare them to the Xbox One controller. So this screw and this screw are Torx T6, same as on the Xbox One controller. And with those screws out, we can disconnect this top motherboard from the bottom motherboard. Once that's loose, we do need to remove the thumbsticks. And we can flip it back over and get the motherboard out. And there we go, let's take a look at the top side. We've got the connector that connects this motherboard to the bottom motherboard. And then we've got the analog sticks that look exactly the same as the Xbox One. Let me bring that over and we can compare them. And the Series S and Series X controller are using the same Alps analog stick as on the Xbox One controller. I was hoping on these new generations of controllers they would somehow upgrade these analog sticks, but unfortunately they look like they're exactly the same. So the analog sticks on these two controllers look exactly the same, and most of the rest of the motherboard also does. The Xbox One controller does have two connectors that connect to this bottom board, while this Xbox Series controller just has one. Let's remove this bottom motherboard and have a look at that, have a look at the buttons, and then we'll do the same for the Xbox One. I will be desoldering the wires on this top piece, but it is important to note that you can remove this and flip this over if you want to get to these analog sticks or remove them. You can do that without desoldering these wires. Desoldering the wires doesn't take very long and it's pretty easy, so that's what I usually do. And with those wires desoldered, this board just comes out super easy. Now to get this bottom board out, we have one, two, three, four, five, six bottom screws that are also the Torx T6. Also, you want to remove the headphone jack. The headphone jack connects to this top board just by these little spring connectors right here. They connect on these pads right here. So this, when this board is flipped around, this would attach on there like that. Now I do also want to mention if you want to learn how to do simple soldering like these when I just remove these wires, I have a free course on GameConsoleRepairSchool.com. You can actually learn how to do all of this kind of stuff and I show you some cheap soldering equipment that you can get so you can do this kind of stuff pretty easily right from your house. I also do have advanced courses but those do cost money. The basic course is free. Now before we remove this board we need to remove this little plastic piece right here. And to do that, we have a clip right here and a clip right there. Now this motherboard will come out super easy, just like that. Looks like our button cushions 
have pulled up with it, which is fine. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Here it is, the top of the motherboard. And here is the bottom. Now I'm gonna compare this to the Xbox One motherboard. So here we have the Xbox One motherboard and here we have the Xbox Series S and X motherboard. You can see that they are pretty much exactly the same. There's a few minor differences on the bottom side. This one has less components that show on the bottom side. You can see these, this one has some components right here. Let's take a look at the top side. And similar story on the top side, pretty close to the same. We got a few minor changes, but overall these boards look pretty similar. This is all pretty much the same as on the Xbox One controller. We got the little vibrator motors in here. One thing I wanna check is to see if this D-pad is interchangeable. If for some reason you don't like the D-pad on the series controller, let's see if you can swap it with one from the Xbox One controller. So one difference is the Xbox Series S and X controller has this little piece right here that the Xbox One controller definitely does not have. These two pieces look pretty close. This is a little different down here, but let's try it out and see what happens. So it looks like the D-pad is swappable. I obviously have not tested it in a game or anything like that, but it all is free and seems to work properly. So it looks like that probably would work. I'm not gonna keep it like this because I do like the new style of D-pad, but if anyone out there likes the old style better, it looks like it is swappable. And really the only thing left to check is the textures on the new Xbox Series S and X controller compared to on the Xbox One controller. The Xbox Series S and X controller has texture on the trigger and shoulder buttons, whereas on the Xbox One controller, it is completely smooth. That's one of the main differences on these grips as well. On the Xbox Series controller, there's a lot more texture on the grip than there is on the Xbox One controller. The new Xbox Series S and X controller looks to be just as repairable as on the Xbox One. And while Microsoft didn't make nearly as many changes to its controller as Sony did, the extra texture on the controller is definitely a welcome change. Let me know down in the comments what I missed and what you wanna know about this controller. If you haven't watched my PS5 DualSense controller teardown, I'll put a link up on the screen so you can come hang out with me and watch me tear that down. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.